Um, also, they probably heard you know, things like you know, flexibility for tools all change. They can change their mind as many times as they like, and they'll still get still get it for the same price. Um, they like like the idea of visibility of progress. I mean, nowadays, I mean, perhaps perhaps um, a few decades ago, they'd accept that a project you know starts. They don't see it until six months later and it comes back. But nowadays, people expect to see progress. Um, so that's something they've got in mind as well. They like collaboration. They've got business critical systems. They've got, they're going to hand over to a new supplier, and um, they want to have some visibility of what's going on and involvement in what's going on. And sometimes they're aware that you know the priorities change, and some of the features that they will bear to wait for six months um, at the start of the project, they actually realise they have to do with earlier as well. So these are the kind of things that clients tell us they would like, um, why they would like that job. And also, you know, it's worth thinking about why we as a supplier would like Agile as well. You know, some of the same same reasons really, but um, one of the key reasons is actually uh, um, it's well, it's better it's better for the um, relationship. So you're much more likely to have a successful long-term relationship because we you know you're going to deliver better software. Um, so it's good from from that point of view. But also, it's actually less risky anyway because um, an Agile um, agreement will tend to be sort of time and materials as opposed to a fixed price agreement. So um, that's obviously always always nice if you're a, if you're a supplier. And it's also more interesting for the team involved um, because you know, the iterations and, and that kind of thing. So that's um, there's several reasons why it's useful for us as a supplier. It also encourages us to um, think about other um, sort of how we can improve our own internal processes in an agile way. Um, it was interesting that Dave Farley's um, presentation at the start of yesterday about um, continuous integration and that kind of thing. And it's something we're yeah, moving towards, um, but um, nowhere near to the extent that he described but, um, that companies like Amazon do. But, but um, it's definitely something that's, you know, an efficiency improvement in the way we work. And it's something that it doesn't really matter what, what project methodology is. It's going to be beneficial for us to, to have those kind of automated um, build, release, testing processes. And uh, they may be labeled as agile, but you know, it doesn't have to be an agile project to have any problem. Yeah, so just going back to some of the, um, you're going to go through one by one the reasons that um, customers say they want, they would like agile and, and talk about how we might achieve those goals regardless of whether it's an Agile project. So, um, so we tried to incorporate sandcastles into this uh, presentation. So it's, a, it's a beach theme. So this is the most impressive sandcastle that you could possibly build, I would imagine. So this is an expectation that clients sometimes has. <laughs> sometimes. Yeah. Always. Always. Um, yeah so, yeah, so the first thing is really to ask the client why, why they think they want to on, so um, try and fish that out. But, um, and explain that the realities are that, you know, whether it's the commercial arrangements or the actual project itself, might not lend itself to an agile approach. It could be something which, you know, you can't break down into iterations because it's all or nothing. Um, and it's not really testable in iterations, perhaps. Um, and essentially, it gets to the point where you're, you're going to, Agree with the customer that you you assess their project, you know, on its merits, and given the constraints that surround it, and and, and recommend an appropriate approach based on that. But again, something you can also sell to the client is the fact that you know we will be utilising the agile techniques within our own um, processes anyway. So the client wants to be able to change their minds, and um, at any point in the project. So, okay, one way of um, looking at this is to say, well, let's reduce the chances of the client changing their minds. <laughs> that would help. So, um, obviously, not always possible, but because um, it could be some business impacts, which, which um, is going to classically use as an example of why clients want change. But quite more often, clients want change because actually they haven't.
clearly um, articulated what they wanted in the first place. So, you know, having the right, right stakeholders involved uh, all the way through the project, right, right from the start and in the analysis phase, make sure it's the right people and those people stay engaged through the project. And also uh, make sure your analysis is you know, effective. Um, have the right people doing that and undertaking that as part of the project. So, so that's one way to basically minimise the chance of change, <coughs> making sure things are correctly specified at the start. And then um, obviously by collaborating with um, and giving visibility to the clients during all the, through all the processes, then you're much more likely to catch um, misunderstandings, perhaps, um, early, earlier rather than later. And so if there is change, then perhaps it, the, the cost of it is minimised or can be absorbed. Um, and another way, ultimately, is to um, recommend to the customer that, you know, it's a, the real, you know, real life situation is that they probably will want some change at some point during the project, and the best thing to do is to preempt that and make, get, that, get the money out, out of their um, um, business um, ready for that change before you reach it, rather than putting a stop, uh, hold on the project. Okay, visibility of progress. So naturally, naturally, customers want to see what's going on. So that's quite easy to provide. That's really just um, all about you know what what um, reporting we're giving the customer. But um, and but also having um, iterative delivery scripts helps give them progress, um, visibility of progress as well. And um, web-based tools such as Trello can make it even easier to, to share progress with them. So that's quite easy to do. The solution that better meets the needs. So this is just, it's pretty similar to the earlier one, so it's about getting the right people involved early and consistently. Um, building on trust and partnership sort of as early as possible, perhaps in the free sales space, that's the starts there. Being more likely to win the projects in the first place, but also it's going to be setting the stage when the project starts. And uh, the last one was implement features early. So yeah, this uh, this um, I think these uh, these sandcastles were specially selected. So this this one has got um, a head that has been delivered earlier than the body, which <laughs> may may be useful in some situations. <laughs> So, yeah, the last obvious how you put features earlier is breaking down the development iterations and also you know, ensuring this, um, that the um, plan doesn't have to be set in stone, it can be flexible on both sides. So, things again you can do regardless of the methodology. So, how do you deliver a successful project? given these different sort of constraints and needs. So, yeah, in summary, one, no one size fits all. We can't be prescriptive about the methodology in you know, the situations I've described. You really have to assess each case on its merits and, and really have the attitude that um, some agile process is better than no agile process and it doesn't have to be 100% agile to do that. Um, and something also you know, that we focused on is, is making sure that our internal processes are you know, taking advantage of agile techniques and tools as well. Again, just for general efficiency purposes. So, yeah, quick run through a, um, a few clients that we've engaged with and ended up with different processes. So, um, we've done some work with Thrifty this year and their um, car rental company. So we ended up doing a pure agile um, approach with them. Now, how did we manage that? Well, it was really circumstantial. They, their offices are right opposite ours, so they felt they could trust us because they could just walk over the road and speak to us if there was a problem. Um, another reason was that um, obviously their, their intention therefore was to try, they wanted to be able to work with us, and they wanted it to be successful, they wanted it to be a long-term relationship, so they felt that, you know, that would show good intentions as well. 
and they also um, wanted to use some of their own development resources in the projects, which made it would have made it virtually impossible to actually estimate. So therefore, and that's another reason why they, they accepted that you know kind of uh, time and materials agile methodology would work for them. And they also um, didn't actually have any documentation. They knew their requirements were going to evolve through the workshops, and so they really wanted us to kind of run with it. So it's almost like an internal project that they um, let us run, essentially. So, you know, Agile works for that, that project. I must say, that's a rarity. We haven't got that many clients who are opposite to us. Um, so this one is more sort of typical. It's a hybrid approach. It was um, running, a, you run with sprints, but um, ultimately they had a fixed set of requirements. So they knew that um, the, they might have to stump up more cash somewhere along the way to get, get those requirements, and they knew it might actually run overrun um, sort of draft schedule. So, um, so that, that kind of worked because they trusted us. But the main thing there was that um, during the pre-sales process, they developed a really good rapport with our pre-sales technical guy, who was also the same person who was going to lead the project, which is one of the things we try to do. And so therefore, um, you know, we, we're, um, yeah, they developed trust. They they wanted to trust us. They did. They did trust um, um, us, and therefore willing to take ten, you know what was essentially a risk um, in doing that. Which again is not always that easy to do. So that was um, yeah went through successfully. There, there was it actually, we actually managed to deliver it within the budget. There was a slight overrun in time, but um, budget wise, that actually did fit within the budget. So this is a complete other end of the spectrum. So QBE are an insurance company. They're quite a large organisation, multinational. And um, we developed several years ago their um, risk management system. And um, it's become very complex over a period of years. So um, this, but also because they're a bit of a sort of um, dinosaur in terms of, sort of organisational structure, there, it was, there's no chance of really, there's no chance of actually like I said earlier, um, even though we've built up a relationship with them, they still would be unwilling to run an agile project per se, from a commercial point of view. So, so but we did have some, some challenges that we wanted to overcome. So, you know, we could have done nothing, in which, in which case they would just, just, we could just price things up as, you know, fixed pricing, you know, we'd agree a price eventually, but they'd have to get it because because their business needed, needed the solutions and the changes they wanted. But um, one thing we were aware of is, was that they were finding it more and more difficult to actually clearly articulate what they wanted because the system had become quite, quite complex. So um, we wanted a way of improving the quality. So we decided to implement some agile processes anyway. And um, so we had, well, we had a lot more collaboration during the design phase, um, but that wasn't really much different to what we would normally do. But what we, what we started doing, which really added value was um, sort of various key points during the development phases of projects. We would um, invite the client down to do beta demos and even actually hand over the system for testing to them. So it's informal testing, but it you know brought out things that might not come out until UAT otherwise. So it was really valuable. And so it meant that by the time we did get to UAT, the you know the amount of defects and queries and change requests and things that were raised at that point went went down massively. So, um, so you know, we're trying to encourage them to take on more, more of an agile approach, but um, you know, bit by bit. I think someone else, one of the other speakers, said that that um, you know, it takes a long time to sort of bring people around to agile. So, so um, and especially when you're working with a client who's not working, used to working in that way. So coming back to my, my point of interest, so yeah, so I did a point earlier about whether whether this was a waterfall or an agile approach, and thinking that it had to be one or the other, and um, so you know it's waterfall on the outside, agile in the middle. So in some ways you could say it's quite similar to some of the sort of scenarios that I've described in a real life project. So. Perhaps having something which is awful on the outside and agile in the middle isn't so unusual after all. It's actually quite normal. 
and it should be acceptable. We shouldn't we try to pigeonhole projects as being either waterfall or agile, or um, we should be saying it's perfectly acceptable and normal to have you know, a waterfall or a fixed fixed requirement project, um, but take advantage of, of agile techniques um, and processes within that to give a successful outcome. And we shouldn't feel that's a failure in any way. So that was my conclusion. And the conclusion conclusion <laughs> is that a risk of repeating myself. So any agile is better than none. And really you have to find a balance somewhere between what the what the client needs or requires um, internally um, from a commercial point of view, what are our needs and um, what are the specific project needs. I didn't really go into that particularly today, but obviously everyone knows that some projects lend themselves to an agile approach more than others. And um, yes, really treat everything on its own merits and always something, and the, and the last thing is to always try and take advantage of agile technology, agile techniques and processes internally regardless because they're going to be added value and give you efficiency. That's it.